Hello and welcome to this short video on graph drawing for GCSE Science. We're going to focus on the kind of graphs that you need to draw for ICES in Year 10 and Year 11 and you'll also need to be able to draw graphs in your exams in Year 11 so it's worth looking at for your revision for those as well. Now there's plenty of pitfalls that you can you can trip up with even if you're quite a good graph drawer so hopefully there'll be something for everybody in this video and at the end there'll be a chance to have a go at drawing a graph from some, some data which will appear on the, on the screen with instructions to pause and go and find some graph paper or, or something like that. So here is the experiment we're going to imagine our data coming from. It's very simple. You hang masses on the spring and it stretches so here are our results. We've got mass and the length of the spring. Now at the moment this table would get you one out of two marks in an ISA. You have enough data. The labels are just about clear enough. If, if I had more space I would have put mass hanging on the spring and length of the spring. But we're losing a mark at the moment really because the units are missing. So make sure that they are always there. The mass is in kilograms. The length is in centimetres. So first decision, what kind of graph will we draw? Well, both of these variables are continuous and that means that we need to do a line graph, which is by far the most common type that you will draw. Uh, if the independent variable, the thing we were changing, um, in this case it's, it's the mass, if that was a categoric variable, if it was uh, the metal the spring was made of and we had five different types of spring, then we'd do a bar chart, um, which We'll go along the bottom. Well, the rule is that the, the x-axis at the bottom has our independent variable on it, the thing that we're changing. So that's the mass. So don't be worried about the decimal point here. Just think of it as 1 to 6. Uh, it gets a bit more confusing if you have 0 0.1 at the end there. That would be just equivalent to 10. You just have to imagine the decimal point moving by two places each time in this case. And we basically can think of it as 1 to 6. So I just check I can get six big squares along the bottom, and I can. I need to go just above seven up the side, so I need seven big squares. So that should do fine. There we are. Those are my axes. And I don't need to actually label them X and Y, but I do need, very importantly, to label them with the same things that are on my uh, table. Otherwise, I will lose marks in an ISA or in an exam. And the units need to be there as well. I'm just going to rotate this paper so that I can write on here. So this is going to be the length in centimetres. It's quite a good idea to do that straight away. Then you can't forget to do it later. OK, now the numbers um, for a line graph the numbers should be on lines. So I'm going to start labelling up here, 1, 2, 3. Now, in this case, I'm going to put 0 0.01 here, 0 0.02, because those are the, the values that I actually used. But that's not the reason that I'm doing it. And this is a very important point. If you end up putting 3.4, 3.95 up here, then you always get a straight line. And it's a kind of classic mistake that people sometimes make. So both your axes, they have to have evenly spaced numbers. The difference between all of these has to be the same. It's as if you're just writing a scale on a ruler. And I've gone down to zero, zero. You don't necessarily have to, but it's, it's often a, a good idea. Now I'm ready to put the points on. So uh, at 0 0.01, I go up to 3.4. Four, there it is, just before 3.5. Nice and easy because the scale that I've chosen means that every decimal point is one little square. You might end up with a slightly harder one. And I'm going to use a, a horizontal vertical cross, which is just slightly clearer than a diagonal cross and definitely better than a, a blob, which makes it harder to tell exactly where the point is. There's 3.9 for 0 0.02. For 0 0.03, I need to get it exactly on 5. There we go. 0 0.04 is 4.8, so just a little bit lower. There it is. 0 0.05 is 6.5. That's just about close enough. And 0 0.6 is 7.1. You have to get your points to the nearest millimetre to get the mark for plotting the points in your ISA.